So when we talk about patterns and operations, what is an operation? We talk about it being addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, right? There's a pattern in how we do all these. We've talked about how the pattern here is ones, tenths, hundreds, and we add them up through their columns. We can regroup or borrow if we need to, right? For instance, this was nine and two is 11, one here, we regrouped it up top into the tenths column. Over here, we've got 387 minus 49. You can't take nine away from seven, right? Because nine's a bigger number. So we have to borrow from here. This eight becomes a seven, which it's really 80, right? So it really is now becoming 70 because we're taking 10 away and putting it here and we're making our seven be 17. 17 minus nine is what? We know it's eight. Because we had to borrow from here, our 80 is now 70. 70 minus 40 is what? 30, right? And then we've got three minus zero is three. So our answer becomes 338. In this instance, you have your ones, which was seven minus nine, your, um, which becomes 17. Your tens, which was 80 subtract 40, but that became 70 because we borrowed. And then our last one was 300 subtract zero, because there was no other hundreds there, right? So that's the pattern there. There's a pattern. When we go into multiplication, the pattern changes and becomes a little bit more difficult. This is still review stuff from last year, so we should be able to go through and have this review okay. But when we look at this, this is pretty basic and pretty straightforward. We've got two, and then we multiply the two by each of the columns. But what ends up happening is we could do two multiplied by five first, and then we do two multiplied by 20, and then we do two multiplied by 600. That's the pattern when we're using multiplication, right? There's a pattern here. If you haven't learned this trick, it's one that's really, really simple, okay? Um, if we do something like one times 20, what is that? 20. What is two times 20? We know it's 40. What is three times 20? 60, good. What is? 12 times 20. Um. So stop for a minute. Stop for a minute. There's a pattern here, right? If I take my zero off and add it later, right? Anytime you're multiplying a number with a zero or zeros, you can take them off, do the multiplication, and then add the zeros on later. One times two is two, add my zero back. Two times two is four, add the zero back. Three times two is six, put my zero back. What's 12 times two? 12 times two is 24, and we put the zero on. Doesn't matter if it's like that, right? Same thing. Uh, seven times 200, right? Seven times two is 14. I add my zeros back on 1400. This is a trick, right? It's a pattern. But whenever we're multiplying these numbers, that's really what we're doing, okay? So we multiply two by five. What is two by five? 10. We know it's 10, right? You have to then put the one up there, okay? We can multiply two by two is what? Four. Plus one, five. five, good. Then we can do two multiplied by six. What is that? 12, 12 right? So our pattern, that we learned a long time ago in doing multiplication like this is to multiply them by still the same thing as adding. We're going ones, tens, hundreds. We're going ones, tens, hundreds. What you don't know is that it's really this. If even though it looks like we're just multiplying it by one, when we write that 50, it's really two times 20, which is 40 plus 10, right? We're not doing that and writing it out that way but we can do that in our head. It becomes a little bit more challenging when we look at this, okay? So we say that this pattern for this is four times seven, four times 60, four times 300, plus 
20 times 7, 20 times 60, and 20 times 300. When we go through and we do a similar thing like this, what we're doing is we are doing all of this process and adding them together. Okay? But we don't do it, we don't write it like this, do we? We do the same thing where we go from 4 to 7, 4 to 6, 4 to 3. So our 4 times 7 is what? 28. We put our 8 down, our 2 goes into the next column, just like addition. 4 times 6 is what? 24 plus 2. Yep, so we have a 6, 2 goes up there. Now, we have 4 multiplied by 3. What are 4 groups of 3 or 3 4s? 3 times 4. 12. 12, and then we add 2? 14. 14, good. Now, we're always taught when we go to the 20, we start by automatically putting a 0 there. Why do we do that? Because we're not actually doing 2 times 7, right? We're doing 20 times 7, right? We know 20 times 7, we can take off our 0. 2 times 7, right? 14, 0, we can put it back on, right? Now, that's why we put the 0 there. We don't have to write 40 down there because we can pretend that it's just a 1 number digit, but that's the reason why we put the zero, because 20 is over here, and it's 20. So you have to put what we call a placeholder. It holds the place of a number. But you know, anytime you're multiplying 20, 30, 40, it's going to end in zero, and that's why we're allowed to just put that there. That's the pattern. So we do two times, two times seven now. What is two times seven? 14. We put the four down. And the 1 goes up. What's 2 times 6? Six? 2 sixes is 12 plus 1, 13. 13, right? We put the 1 up. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7, right? I'm going to erase this. And we add it up. 8 plus 0 is 8. 6 plus 4 is 10. 4 plus 1 is 5, plus 3 is 8. 7 plus 1 is 8. 8808, eight, eight, right? How many people are familiar with these? It's review, it's coming back, right? Okay. This next one is where it becomes a little bit trickier because the pattern for long division you know, is, a, is a specific way. But uh, here we've got our addition, subtraction, two multiplications with a single digit and with a double digit. Remember, on the double digit, when you start to multiply the tens by stuff, you have to have the placeholder. That's the pattern, placeholder pattern. Okay, When we look at this, long division, whenever we're looking at long division, we do first number with the first number. So if we were to ask this question, we'd say 9,000, 9, sorry, 9,621 divided by 3. We wouldn't say 3 divided by 9,621, right? So we're trying to see how many times we can take 9,621 uh, 9, and break it into three groups, or three, if we were to break it into three groups, how many people would be in the group, or how much money would each person get, right? There's lots of ways in which you can look, in way that you can look at that. But we say three, and oftentimes we'll say, how many times does three go into nine? That's what we say, how many times does it go into it, right? Teachers say that all the time. Well, three doesn't go into a nine, but how many times can nine be divided by three, or how many ways could it be divided? Katie? Three. Three, right? Or we say three groups of three. And when you were younger, you'd go like this. Okay, nine, there's nine, there's a group of three, there's a group of three, there's a group of three. So it can go in three times. Three times three is nine, right? So we say three can go into or can be divided three times. Okay? I always like to put a little multiplication here in the corner to remind myself. I said, okay, 3 can go into 9 three times, and 3 groups of 3 is 9, right? And we then can subtract them. 9 minus 9 is 0. Every time we subtract, we bring down, right? So how many times can 3 
fit into six? Or how many groups of three can we make with six? Liv? Two, right? Three, we can make two groups of three and six. Our two goes up here. And then we do three times two, or three groups of two actually is six, fits in perfectly, right? We subtract it, zero. We bring down two. Now, we're kind of stuck here a little bit. How many times can three go into two? How many groups of three can we make with just me and Liberty? Me and Liberty are standing here. How many groups of three can we make? We have to bring down the one. But we can't just bring it down without putting something up here, right? We can put a zero up there. And we can then say three groups of zero is zero. We can subtract it. Two minus zero is still two. And we bring down the one. Now we've got 21. How many times can you have 21 break up three times? Or how many groups could go into 21 of three? Or we say three times something could equal 21. How many? Three times eight is 24. But what I do in my mind, it is seven. What I do in my mind is I say, okay, I know three times five is 15. That's a friendly number, so it's got to be more than five. Three times 10 is 30. It's got to be less than that, right? So somewhere between five and 30. 15 is pretty close. So I do 15, 16, 17, 18. That's six. 19, 20, 21 is seven, right? So we can say three can break 21 up seven times. We put our seven up here. Lots of times when people are doing long division or learning it, they go, oh yeah, three can go into 21 seven times. And they do that, right? Remember, we always want a number that should be very close to that number, right? We shouldn't have something that's way off. I look at that and I say, okay, 21 and 7, the number should be fairly close to 21. In this case, 3 times 7 actually is 21, and we subtract. Zero remainder. So, 9,621 divided by 3 is 3,207 with zero remainder. If you're like, Mr. McCourt, I don't believe you. I think you're off. Well, then you actually could just add them up because you're taking the big number and you're breaking it into three groups. Seven and seven and seven, that's 21. Zero, zero, zero plus two is two. Two, four, six, six, three, six, nine. 9,621, 9,621. You can check those, right? These are patterning in math. What we're going to do is we've got 10 questions we're going to work through right now. 10 questions, okay? Uh, three addition, three subtraction, two multiplication, two division. We've got just over 20 minutes to work through those, okay? So let's go through, let's get through those practice stuff. Really, this is review, but we're catching up. It's been a while since we've done some math, but what's important is that there are patterns into how we do all of this. You're used to the patterns for the most part, so it comes fairly easily. Some of them might be a little bit tricky in terms of uh, two-digit multiplication or division, right? And so it might take slowing down and going through the pattern a little bit, okay? Anybody have any questions? All right, let's do it. <laughs>